Hey everybody and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Sid. I like making videos about programming, math, productivity, and a bunch of other cool things. If you want to talk to a community interested in those things, then join the Discord server, link in description down below, and I'll get straight to the problem. So Twosum is a very, very classic example of an interview problem or a competitive programming problem because it's not what people usually do as their first problem when they're getting into things like this. So let's read through the problem description. Given an, array, given an array of integers nums and an integer target, return the indices of the two numbers such that they could add up to target. Remember, you're returning the indices, so like what position they are in the array, and not the actual numbers themselves. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution. Okay, so what that tells us is that we don't have to worry about the case where there is no solution, um, and we can just assume that there is, meaning that simplifies our problem by a lot. And you may not use the same element twice. So suppose it was, you know, like four, and you had this two in here. You couldn't say the output would be zero, zero, because you can't add the same element to itself to get the result. You can return the answer in any order. So in this case, where you have two and seven, and they're at index zero and one, you, can, you could also return one and zero, because that's still seven plus two equals nine. Now, if you think about this for a little bit, the first solution that probably pops into your mind, probably, is that you want to loop through the list, starting for each element, you want to loop through the list, store the element, well not store the element, you want to loop through the list for every element, check to see if the target minus that element also exists in that list, and if it does, then return the indices of those two things. So in this case, you would loop through it for two, note down that tar that 9 minus 2 is 7, then loop through to try and find 7, and if 7 is in the list, you just return those two indices. So let's try to implement that, right? Now, pause the video first and try to implement it on your own, and then come back to it after you have. So for i in range len nums, right? And then for j in range i plus 1 len nums, because we don't want to check the same index twice, because again, you can't use the same element twice if nums j equal equals target is equal to target minus nums i then return i j right if target minus um, the element that you're looping for exists in the array then return this and we're going to call the target minus the element just as the complement of the element. So target minus the ith element is just the complement of the ith element, right? So remember that term, the complement. So let's run this code, see if it works. It does, awesome. And let's submit it just to make sure it does work. It's going slow, really slow. Okay, faster than only 17% of solutions, but only faster than a small amount. And that's because if you look at this uh, uh, code that we've written, you see that we have nested for loops, each looping about n times. So you'll have to loop n times n times total, giving you to the giving you the time complexity of big O of n squared. Now that's quadratic time, and you know it does pass every test case, but it's not very fast, and that's not good enough for us. Now I want you to think a little bit about how you could actually speed this up. If there is some sort of way that you can actually store the complements of each index of each number as they arrive so that you can check it quicker. So you can check it in maybe constant time. And if you think about it for a little while, there is. There's a data structure you can use to store these things called a hash table. Um, and in Python specifically, it's called a dictionary. So essentially what we want to do is initialize our dictionary here, right? Some dictionary D. Uh, this is how you initialize it. And a dictionary is consisted of a key and a value. Um, the key can be any uh, base data type. So it can be integers, strings, um, and integers, strings, uh, booleans. That's what keys can be. And values can be anything. Then what you want to do is loop through the array, right? So for i in range len nums. Because again, we want to keep track of the indices themselves and not just the number. So we loop through um, the every element in nums, and let's just say let's just call the complement of the number i. So n equals equals n. Let's call the complement of the ith element n. 
So target minus nums i. Then to initialize it in the dictionary, if it doesn't already exist, we say if n not in uh, d, then say dn equals i. But if it already does exist, then that's awesome because you're done with the problem and you can just return um, what you want to return, dn and i, and that should give you the solution to the problem. Now let's run this code and see if it works. I'll put, no, oh yeah, wait, this should, uh, this shouldn't be n, this should be the actual numbers. If n not in d, uh, this should be equal to i, and then this should return d and i. And if you return this, we get the accepted output, and you submit this, and you should have something that runs a lot quicker than 3,964 milliseconds. And that's because within this dictionary, you're storing the variables, and instead of having to loop through every time to search for um, complements, you already have those complements stored, and you can just go through that in linear time because that's what it's like to look things up in a hash table or a dictionary. You can search those in linear time, big O of one, and you'll end up with the, with the linear time solution because you're only looping once through an array of length n. I hope that helped. If it did, leave a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing for more cool coding content coming soon. Join the Discord server down in the description down below to talk about cool competitive programming problems and interview problems with other very dedicated programmers. Uh, share this video with somebody that might like it. I hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.